together. You want to tell us about the building more because I get asked constantly, but... Mm. So yeah. you're going to interview me, but this is the building. <laughs> <That's right. Yes. laughs> Just so that I can provide this for yeah. information. Hmm. So this one was... Well, we don't have to take this. It's no. Just, <laughs> right? It's Anderson's, right? Yeah. Well, originally this was an empty space. Right. Yes. Okay. No. Yeah. And there was Anderson's next door. Originally it, it was, um, it was an amazing place. It was the first department store in this whole area. Mm. First big store, which actually had different sections for different mm. things. And very high tech for the time. Mm -hmm. They had this, um, you know those systems whereby you can put money into a, a kind of a container and put it into a vacuum tube? Oh yeah, yeah. They had this yeah. where the office was upstairs and the vacuum oh. tubes were shot back and forth from all the departments. Neat. It was really I cool. wish we still had that. Now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have some film that was taken in there in 1950, I think 56, 57. And it's really fun because you see, uh, the family are going into the shopping and the, the mother is doing the groceries and the father and the son are going over and taking down the rifles and checking out the, <laughs> the range of rifles that are sitting on the wall yeah. and think, man, times have changed. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, they're not even locked. <laughs> Let's take this down and take a look see. But that was interesting. Yeah, what they did was, and Anderson's owned most of this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that store itself, dates from just after the Great Fire, which was 1872. Okay. So that building is 1873, roughly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that wall is 1873. Wow. That's where you have that, That's how old. This is one of the oldest buildings left. Because in 72, there was this big fire. Don't know if you heard about that. No. It was, it was weird. For years, it was, um, it was reported as, well, there was the Great Fire, and this is what happened. It started, there, was, there was a big hotel here, right across yeah. the road, like three stories high, going way back onto Asa wow. Street and stables behind that. And in 1872, a fire started in the stables. And most of the buildings were here than the wood, mm -hmm. right? So the fire started in the stables, came out to the corner, went down Prescott Street to where Mr. Mozzarella is now. Mm -hmm. And then instead of going on down to the river, it jumped over Prescott Street and worked its way back up again. Then when it got to here, it jumped over there and burned that building. Uh -huh. wow. And it was only like last year or the year before I, I met with Paul Hutt, the fire chief. Yeah. And we went through the whole thing and said, there's no way that was a natural fire. Mm. That was deliberately set, that was deliberately run. And we don't know whether it was an insurance scam mm -hmm. or whatever, but it mm -hmm. certainly cleared this whole area and suddenly people were starting building in brick and in stone and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it was an interesting time. So brickworks so in Toronto, eh? <laughs> <laughs> they had brickworks right here on the river. Oh, did they really? Yeah, oh, so okay, most of these bricks were probably made just on the South Branch here. Oh. Huh. Uh, down roundabout where you know the, the apartments that are down there. Mm -hmm. anyway, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know where so you're there was about. a brick work there that huh. clothiers owned. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> we have to get back to this building. This building was then basically they filled in between two yeah, buildings, right, yeah. clearly. And this was then this became the gentleman's store, gentleman's clothing store. Okay. But it was um, again, as you can see, they put they put effort into the place. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know the, the ceilings and everything like this, mm -hmm. and it was just they had. A, Obviously, you can see where you have the shelves. That was the, the adjoining door Absolutely. I think, into, yeah. into Anderson. So we have some photographs of the place over the years from the time it was built mm -hmm. right through and up to now at the archives. But um, I think that's the main thing, that this was, this was just part of the Anderson store. Mm -hmm. And it was built because Andersons were doing so well at the time. It became mm -hmm. Anderson of Langstaff, and then um, Anderson took over. But it goes, you know, the, the business goes back, and this place mm -hmm. is business. This area goes back to after that fire. Before the fire, that um, building, in fact, this area was, oh, 1835, I think, the first wow. store, the first building was. Mm -hmm. So wow. this is traditionally very much What the started the town, do you know? What started the town was a mill. Okay. Uh, the clothiers who lived in what's now South Gore, okay. they knew that there was, uh, there was a business behind, because there was no sawmill between, really between the Ottawa and the St. Lawrence. Mm -hmm. okay. And so what they did is they followed the South Branch to where they found the falls. And you don't even realize that how powerful the falls were down there. Mm -hmm. it, they, um, they bought the land, bought 100 acres, the north side of, of the river, for about, I think, 75 pounds, set up a, a, a sawmill. Mm -hmm. And then everybody around, this place was just bush. And I, I mean, bush is the wrong <laughs> word. The average tree was about 150 foot tall, but mm -hmm. six feet in diameter. So as people were coming in here, especially in the 1820s and 30s, they'd have to come in and clear the land. Mm -hmm. And so they had all these trees and they needed to build. So they'd go down to the sawmill 
and have the trees cut into planks. Mm. And then they would exchange. Mm. They'd also, he also added a stone and made it into a grist mill so people could bring in their crops and all that kind of stuff. But they traded. I mean, when they uh, cut down these trees, they had all the, the stumps still there. They would put fires under them and burn them, and they'd end up with potash, which is really important in not just, um, say, for fertilizer, but also used in things like perfumes and, and various things. So it would be a trade. they bring the potash and they'd get their, their wood cut, or they'd... And then what happened was the people would come from around the place to get to the sawmill, and it was a long journey through you know, dense woods. Yeah. So they'd stay overnight in the clothier's house. So the next thing was somebody built a hotel, mm -hmm. which is basically a, yeah. a one-story building with a couple of extra rooms. And then somebody else would build a blacksmith shop. Um, so where, basically where O'Heafe's is, mm -hmm. next door to that, the, the empty space, that was mm -hmm. the first blacksmith store. O'Heafe's was, is the oldest, the, the site of the oldest store. I think it was built 1827 or something. And that's the same building. Um, so the, all this, it just built up around the sawmill and the yeah. gristmill and gradually. <laughs> this side of the river wasn't really developed. In 1840, 1842, there's a report how, and on this corner, this is where the road ended. There was a trail coming along here. And then from here on in, it was bush. The cows were being, were grazing here at this corner. <laughs> and after this, it was just a, a, a trail through the woods to yeah. get, get down to Prescott. And there was a man in town who would go down to Prescott once a week to bring the mail up. And there were times when places along the trail where he had to get off the horse and walk because there wasn't enough headroom to pass under the trees. That's how dense the place was. He had to use a horse because there was no way that a carriage or a cart could, could. So, I mean, it was really <laughs> something else. And, uh, sorry, that was Monica. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this is, this is so much of the center of the history of the town. Mm. Um, there is a, a walking tour I wrote. Have you? Yes, actually, we have okay. yeah. one map. One now, yeah, we got them from the library. No, then. I think they're both gone now. Are yeah. they? We're giving them away. We have, we have, oh, that's what I'm for. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to try and just print off a pile more. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's... Very cool. There's so yeah. much Is there any validity there. to the tunnels under the buildings? Oh, yeah. um, there were tunnels, but I think they, were, they weren't tunnels as such. They were storage areas. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. um, and they did link up some of the buildings, but I don't know if they survived whether they were filled in because a lot of changes were made at different times. Mm -hmm. At one point, that driveway on the other side of of what well, I still think it was the red and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there was a giant windmill there. What they call a windmill. It was a you know when you see the old-fashioned oil drill platforms. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, like they're oh yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. This, Well, it was one of them with a windmill at the top, mm -hmm. and it pumped water up into big tanks that were outside and they were used by customers at the store to water their horses while mm. they were in shopping. <laughs> so all sorts of things were going on around here that, mm. you know, you, they're just not there now. You yeah. never know about them at all. Do you want to get the door for me?